order, brethren, to receive the most worshipful, the Grand Master. Washington. All Freemasons meet as equals, and we have an opportunity to create a nation in the very essence of Masonic morality. It would be wonderfully symbolic, don't you think? You'll be wanting to put the all-seeing eye on our banknotes next. Uh, uh, you, uh, you think I'm taking it a bit far? Please don't ask me questions like that, Brother Franklin. You know I cannot tell a lie. <laughs> Oh, come on, Brother Washington. Everybody lies occasionally, surely. Especially politicians. Not me. Not even so much as an alternative fact. Oh, but we must all be aware of fake news. <laughs> but people must be free to think what they like as well. We can have no thought police in our new society. The foundation stone of our new nation built on all those principles that we hold dear. The plans for our new capital city already have a very Masonic feel to them, yeah. Candidate for initiation into the order, I'm giving them a little introduction into some of our mysteries. These two gentlemen are founding an entire nation built on our principles. There we have great promises for our new nation. You know, I wonder if other presidents after me will also be Freemasons. Many will be. And Freemasonry will become embedded in the American culture. And the I will appear on the banknotes. Oh, God. These principles will be honored with a gift from your French brethren. A gift that will be a welcoming beacon to the poor and oppressed. This is the statue we are giving you. It's a bit small, isn't it? Oh, this is a maquette. The real thing is bigger. Much, much bigger. America will produce a great many great Americans from many different walks of life and many different fields, and many will be Masons. Sportsmen, actors, writers, soldiers, filmmakers, businessmen, inventors, Astronauts! Uh, what on earth is an astronaut? <laughs> no, they're not. I don't follow. Well, they're not on Earth, they're in space. In fact, Brother Buzz Aldrin was the second man to walk upon the surface of the moon. Uh, that's the best thing I've heard this evening. What, that a mason walked on the moon? Man on the moon. Amazing. But don't forget the musicians. Do not forget the musicians. <laughs> Authoritarian and totalitarian regimes continue to suppress Freemasonry, afraid of its strong heritage of liberty and equality. It symbolizes the inevitability of your end. The British Army had traveling lodges that moved with regiments. Freemasons have served their countries and communities with distinction. Freemasons met across the Union and Confederate divide to celebrate their common rituals. And today, Freemasonry remains an active part of military life in many countries. Freemasonry has burned as a blazing fire through the last three centuries, the driving force behind the Royal Society, 
was initiated into Freemasonry. Prince Edward, Duke of Kent, father of Queen Victoria, and Prince Augustus, Duke of Sussex. The two princes brought their feuding Grand Lodges together and reconciled to be the united Grand Lodge of England. Kings George IV, William IV, Edward VII, Edward VIII, and George VI were all Freemasons, as were 18 dukes and princes, including the Duke of Edinburgh. This year, His Royal Highness Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent, celebrates his 50th year as Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of England. His Royal Highness was proposed into Freemasonry by the then Grand Master, the Earl of Scarborough. He was initiated into Royal Alpha Lodge No. 16, an advocate for the craft all over the world, continuing three centuries of distinguished royal tradition at the very heart of English Freemasonry. To order brethren to receive the most worshipful, the Grand Master. As permanent master of these three lodges, I now call on my deputy masters. Most worshipful Grand Master. Most worshipful Grand Master. Most worshipful Grand Master. Most worshipful Grand Master. I humbly ask you to complete the initiation of this worthy candidate for Freemasonry. Dawn our ceremonies and forever remind us of our incomparable heritage, the birth of organized Freemasonry, stressing the deep and sincere loyalty and affection felt by the brethren of the United Grand Lodge of England for their Grand Master. I had the pleasure of meeting 136 Grand Masters visiting from overseas at Freemasons Hall yesterday. Today, though, we are a meeting of more than 4,000 gathered from all around the world, from our own constitution and beyond. When the global Masonic family comes together to celebrate our past, and renew our own pride and confidence in and enthusiasm for Freemasonry. I hereby read the text of a letter sent today to Buckingham Palace. May it please your majesty. We, the representatives of over 200,000 Freemasons under the United Grand Lodge of England, most respectfully express our continuing loyalty to your majesty's throne and person in this the 66th year of your long and distinguished reign of His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent as our much loved and greatly respected Grand Master. We humbly thank God for preserving our order and fervently pray his blessings on your Majesty so that our loyal devotion to your Majesty may long continue. Given at the Royal Albert Hall this 31st day of October, Anno Domini 2017. Her Majesty has been pleased to reply in the following terms. The Queen has asked me to thank you for your kind letter of loyal greetings on behalf of the representatives of the Freemasons under the United Grand Lodge of England, which are being celebrated on the 31st of October at the Royal Albert Hall. Her Majesty appreciated your thoughtfulness in writing as you did. We leave the Royal Albert Hall even more proud of our ancient institution. Worldwide, Freemasonry remains as important and relevant as ever. A global society of perhaps six million people. As the globe embraced Freemasonry, enlightenment came. I may not agree with what you say, but I shall defend to the death your right to say it. None is more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free coat of arms of Donald Trump, what does it actually represent? Well, this is rather interesting, actually. This is an arcane Scottish heraldic law providing evidence of uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, deep anglophilia, I would say, and also touches upon the royal prerogative. Uh, there we have the double-headed eagle representing his uh, Scottish G Germanic uh, her heritage.
The Masonic CHIP program uses modern police-approved techniques to create a child identification kit. And we take fingerprints. We also provide them with a swab for uh, um, getting a DNA swab. And we also provide them with an uh, imprint where they can get an imprint of the child's teeth. So not only does it provide DNA as well as a swab, but it is also a source if you were using tracking dogs to, to provide a scent for the, for the child. You may be surprised to see who we found using tricks to cover up their license plates. Apparently, they're law enforcement. You know, in, in Hollywood and in the industry and the stuff we do, there's a lot of like insider secrets to keeping your career going and a lot of insider secrets to, 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 to making things tick.